in, in terms of um, something maybe a little more current with um, the Black Lives Matter movement and uh, diversity, which I know has been something you know close to your heart because you were in charge of development before you became executive director of FISA. Um, what, what what view have you taken on this? I know, I know FISA have put out a statement, but we're we're quite a white dominated sport in you know in in most countries, I guess. Yeah, just a, a few things is, um, you know, that we're pursuing coastal and indoor rowing as one of the ways to diversify our sport. It's it's critical that we diversify our sport. Um, and uh, we are, uh, in fact, tomorrow morning going to decide to create a diversity and inclusivity commission, um, mainly to share models of uh, clubs and national federations of what they're doing to be more inclusive and more diverse. So we, we see it, we understand it, um, and uh, it's, it's critical that we make steps forward. Um, the other day, we had a staff uh, Zoom call with Anita de France, um, which was fantastic. And uh, we asked uh, some difficult questions, and she shared with us some uh, very difficult stories from her life uh, as an as a African-American female uh, in the sport of rowing and in the world in the Olympic movement and the sport. And if you haven't read her book, uh, it's a really interesting read. We're so proud. I'm so proud to know her and uh, be a part of her life um, since 1983 or no, since 1978. Um, what is the book so, called? Um, if you if you put Anita de France into into Amazon, you'll you'll find it. Okay. Olympic memories, Olympic story, or something. Yeah, like yeah. That. Uh, very highly recommended. Really amazing person and amazing um, life story. Um, and she uh, is is doing really well, Martin. I was with, she spent uh, all three days on our our last Los Angeles 2028 uh, site visit. Lucid, fantastic. Um, lost a lot of weight. Looks great, wow. and uh, um, she's just back to the Anita we knew from the 80s yeah. and, and 90s. So I'm really happy about that. Um, on the political point, um, you know that FISA has a long history of trying to be a Political, apolitical. Uh, Tommy Keller did not allow national anthems and national flags at our victory ceremonies, um, and we did everything to stay as much as we could away from politics. So each time we kind of uh, get close to that gray area, that zone, we we really discuss it. Is it appropriate for FISA? Do we have the resources? Um, and um, we have reinforced, uh, and you'll see in our uh, Extraordinary Congress proposals, we've reinforced our principles of, of rowing and a visa. Um, um, so that's that's my response to your question. Making tweets and statements, um, we want to walk the what we want to do the right thing, and that's yeah. by making doing actions. So we're rather hesitant always to make comments and statements right away, but watch our actions to see what we do. We feel that that's the best way to get to the end of what we're trying to achieve yeah that that's a really interesting um status so just uh christopher anton is on on this um viewing has asked a question about um if if los angeles goes to a shorter distance will that have implication for the 2027 world championship yeah we uh we're very clear about this that we're not going to let one event decide and change our sport and so everything, everything will be 2,000 meters except the Olympic regatta if we're in uh, Long Beach. So uh, that's we discuss that a lot, and uh, and we know that you know it could it could be that someone is better at 2,000 than 1,500, and we'll have a better result at the World Champs. Or, but uh, we believe it's the right thing to do: stay with our sport as it, as we've designed it, and only uh, alter it uh, on the one-off occasion. I um, see we have the My Olympic Life. Thank you, Ludlam and uh, Johnny Ambrose. Yeah, that's so cool. That's so cool. Um, uh, Matt, I, I was going to ask about um, rowing and uh, sponsorship because, uh, you know, one of the things FISA used to have, um, I would it be called a title sponsor. Um, and I know uh, FISA has, has made great moves in terms of the image of sport as um you know, with the uh, worldwide fund for nature and um, clean water, specifically to you know, uh, in part to attract 
commercial partners. How has that been going? What, what are the likelihood of anything? Bad. <laughs> uh, I can tell you, uh, and all the other international federations, we, we meet regularly and discuss it. It's terrible right now. The reputation of doping and the Russian crisis, the reputation of all the corruption scandals in uh, international sport, um, it's just terrible. And uh, consolidation in the, in the industries, um, we, you know, uh, as an international um, product package, um, it's very, very difficult. We're too small. Um, advertising has totally changed with the internet and social media. There's, it's much cheaper to advertise and to, to reach your targeted audience this way. So it's really, really a difficult time. Um, we tried in our communities, we, we tried to really push the clean water approach because it's really a credible environmental element of, uh, of our sport. Um, and what we found, and we had, we had really discussions with CEOs at the CEO level, um, particularly with the um, interpublic group, IPG, interpublic group uh, of companies. And uh, there was confusion between, is it, uh, uh, is it uh, consumer, pro uh, is, is it sport or is it, um, you know, environment? And yeah. it was very confusing. So we, we pulled back and it's WWF driving. Uh, it and uh, trying to convince their uh, partners and sponsors to help finance. And the main thing is to finance uh, the center in uh, in Zimbabwe. In yeah. Zimbabwe. But uh, it's a very difficult time and it's it's not rowing, it's all sport, all international federations. And it's it's almost each day in the media, the weightlifting federation is the president of the uh, track and field athletics federation that um, it's, we have, we're really struggling. So in, in that sense, what, what what's the future for rowing like? I mean, what I mean, you mentioned your hopes for 2021 and, and a great showcase to happen in, in Shanghai, God willing. Um, what does the future for rowing look like in terms of, you know, it's an expensive sport to run and uh, particularly with the changes that, you know, you've, you've tried to introduce successfully with the TV coverage, you know, these all cost money. Yeah, so number one is uh, what's going what the world is going to look like uh, post COVID, um, and we uh, we're trying we're talking to different experts and reading everything we can to see um, what uh, corporations and companies and potential sponsors are going to have, what resources they'll have for sponsorship of sport, uh, governments what are they going to be able to contribute to sport events and sport teams, and um, it's not particularly positive. I'm sorry about that. Um, we, <clears throat> the Shanghai uh, initiative is also an attempt to touch the Chinese market where you have to have events in China to touch Chinese companies, Chinese sponsors. And so it's, it's allowed us to get much closer to possible Chinese sponsors. Um, and that's, that's going, we're getting in the door, we're getting into discussions with uh, major uh, global uh, Chinese companies. Um, Europe is in not the best of shape and uh, financially and economy, economically. And uh, so a European based uh, company, they're, they're not doing title sponsorships and presenting sponsorships very often anymore, except for maybe football or, and soccer. Yeah. Um, for the future, uh, we have lots of other ways to finance things. And uh, um, the, uh, we will continue with our sport as a sport and not a commercial product that uh, changes its rules to be more attractive uh, uh, to, but change a fundamental of the sport uh, but we'll see how this all plays out um, yeah. we're rather positive because the the uh, we have a partnership with the shanghai um, city uh, sport administration on uh, on sponsorships and so we have some fantastic um, marketing people in shanghai working to get sponsors for rowing wow that, that's amazing um so it's it's great to hear that there is hope in, in terms of you know for the future of the sport. I wonder looking back, Matt, you've been involved in, in so many things that uh FISA has, has has done or so many changes. Are there any that you're you know you look back on and you're particularly proud of having been a part of? Um and, and you know, you think that, that was something that, that I can really, you know, see as adding legacy to the sport. Yeah, for those who don't know. <laughs> 
I've uh, worked for FISA since 1992, volunteered since 1986 to FISA, and have been executive director since 1995. Um, one of the first jobs that John Boltby gave me, my predecessor as a secretary general, executive director of FISA, was to look after the uh, para rowing in 1995. Um, and uh, so I dug into that and uh, I'm really proud and feel that my contribution was pretty you know, substantial to get uh, into the Paralympic Games and to develop Paralympic rowing and was recognized by the IPC when I was made chair of the uh, Paralympic Games Committee of the IPC for the past few games. So um, I'm proud of that. Um, what I did want to say, Martin, is the, 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 fa the second wave of the COVID was the change of the 2021 season. Um, so you, you probably, with the postponement of the Olympic Games and rescheduling uh, in the slot one year later, it, means, it meant we had to change all of our events, change the dates of all of our events. And uh, it, it was a huge job because the organizing committees had to go to the government authorities and see if this date would work. Oh, there's a big exhibition in town on that weekend. We can't do that one, blah, blah, blah. Uh, do we still have the funding for next year? Uh, and during lockdown, they, you know, it wasn't so easy to get answers from the government. Um, and so that's why um, two days ago, we released finally the 2021 program. We had only one change in venue, and that was uh, Truckeye, Lithuania. The government wouldn't uh, guarantee the money uh, at this time for next year because of COVID considerations. And the money that had been reserved for Sabadia 2020, they were able to shift it to 21. And so we could slot in Sabadia to, to replace Truckeye. Um, so uh, that was a big exercise to move all of our events, um, and that was uh, some more gray hairs uh, uh, to get that all ready and, and get that out there. So I'm, I'm happy that that's now done. I don't uh, exclude that uh, in 22, 23, and 24, we'll have some issues with government financing of some of our events, and there might have to be some changes. Yeah. Um Along the lines of uh, less events, I mean, would there still be the three World Cup events or would, would other uh, FISA events suffer? I'm um, going through the budget line by line now um, with our, uh, our news from the IOC and our expectations. And I don't see, uh, I, I see us financially uh, stable enough to continue to 24 with our uh, current standard of living with, uh, with the events that we have. We will trim uh, some things here and there uh, because uh, post-COVID uh, income will be slightly less or, or less. Um, and we hope uh, our, our reserve recovers from the, the market crash. Um, but uh, I don't, at this point, I don't see that we uh, will have a massive change in our, our style, our standard of living in rowing in our events. Right, just one, one thing that occurs, will there still be, uh, if lightweights disappear from the Olympics in 24, what is the place for lightweights in the World Championship program? That is a very good question because uh, it's the national federations who have to finance the non-Olympic events, uh, teams that travel to international sport, international regattas and the World Championships. Um, we, uh, we are analyzing the uh, entries from 8, 2018, 2019, after the uh, World Championship program was made gender equal, um, and the you know the lightweight pairs aren't uh, heavily heavily entered, um, and we know that the national federations have to find that money themselves. They're not getting it from the sport ministry or the Olympic their Olympic committee. Um, as far as we're concerned, lightweight rowing is a vital and key part of our sport. Lightweight uh, boats are a key part of most continental uh, championships, Asia, uh, Americas, Africa. They are um, at the university level, at the club level. It's a huge, hugely participating event. Um, and uh, we anticipate offering uh, lightweight events at the uh, world level. It's just uh, we know how difficult it is to find the money when uh, you have to raise it yourself to get yourself there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really interesting. I, you know, with all these issues to, um, you know, to try and solve and try and find a route through, and you mentioned trying to, you know, with a smaller team, trying to back your way through to making a 2021 program. 
What is it that, that keeps you involved, keeps you motivated about the sport of rowing? What is it you love about the sport of rowing? How how come you have this, you know, this drive, this determination? I mean, I, I know it's your job, but I, I would sense it goes deeper than that, knowing you. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I started rowing like most Americans uh, at university. Uh, a tall, skinny guy came knocking at my door, uh, at the dorm, saying, do you want to come down and try rowing? Um, because I'm uh, 6'4", or 194, of course, uh, uh, I was uh, getting some letters. So I went down to Marina del Rey in Los Angeles, where UCLA rode, and was hooked the first day. Um, and uh, and uh, I loved it. And my problem was, and I made the varsity boat in uh, my sophomore year, my second year. Um, but then I uh, herniated a disc, and this is 1978. And there was not microsurgery in 1978. So I had to take a year off and do a lot of swimming. Uh, I came back for two more years with uh, and made it through and finished my, uh, my university career. But uh, my back couldn't row international level for sure. I kept having spasms and problems. So I became a young coach. Um, but uh, like all of us, it changed my life. Rowing changed my life. And uh, uh, it's just uh, fantastic. So um, as a young coach, uh, if you give, if you permit me to say a few words, there was no coaching education program uh, in the United States back in the early 80s. So I wanted to f learn from the best coach who, who I could. And uh, we had hired Chris Korzanowski to be our Olympic coach. And he said, oh, you have to go see Tor Nielsen and Piri Luko. And so uh, I moved to, I got a job. I met him, uh, got a job, moved to Italy, moved to Piri Luko. For the old ones in the audience, you'll know that that's the Italian National Center. And I lived there three years working for Tor and learning from Tor. And that's when I worked out my strengths weren't particularly in coaching, but perhaps uh, management administration. I had an MBA from UCLA, um, and that's how I got into the jobs that I have now. So um, I want to give back. Um, you know, when you're coaching, you feel it day to day, each day, when you see um, the eyes and the development of the athletes, and I, which I loved. But I, 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 I can feel that the things we do at FISA, you know, when we get down to the development program, to the areas and touching the lives of individual athletes, um, then I feel good that uh, we're doing the right thing for our sport. And I, if you allow me I, to say um, the people in our sport are just fantastic, we all know. And in the FISA governance group with Tricia Smith, for example, president of the Canadian NOC, fantastic. Jean-Christophe Roland, the president, is just Fantastic guy. We have, they're all rowers. They're all rowers around the council. Uh, Garrett Jan Egenkamp, the new treasurer, fantastic. Um, we talk about sport. It's about rowing and what can we do for rowers. So if you if, if you have any doubts about FISA and those bloody, those guys with the blue blazers, um, they're rowers. They're rowers. And John Christophe every morning is on his erg. I'm on my erg or the watt bike every morning. I've had some shoulder problems, so it's more watt bike. Um, but nearly all of us are doing training every day. The, the gym at the hotel where the meeting is is always packed in the morning. So uh, just uh, just know we have uh, it's in our blood and, and we're there with you. Yeah, I must say, I get, I get a sense of that very much. Though, Matt. I, I just wonder how long can you carry on for? Uh, yes, I'm not young. Uh, I'm currently 61 and uh, I'm definitely looking forward to slowing down a bit. Um, we worked out that this is my first summer in the, like, I don't know, 35, 40 years with, with, without every other weekend going to a regatta and being wow. away. So I'm hoping to take a proper summer vacation uh, and just not get in an airplane and not get in a hotel <laughs> and, uh, and uh, try, to, uh, try to have some good time with the family. But we'll be back in the driver's seat for 21 and trying to make the events happen in, as best as we can. We have a fantastic staff team. I'm really proud of them. Um, they're working like crazy to help everyone, help help you, help the sport. Martin is on our commentary team. We're so proud of Martin and, uh, and the commentators. Um, it's, a, it's a great environment. Well, well Matt, you know, the, you, you've ranged far and wide this afternoon, and I know you're very busy, and, and you know, you found out of that time and hour to spend with us to talk about rowing, and, and you've been very candid as well. It's been fascinating to hear all, all the things that, you know, from your perspective and... Uh, what lies ahead? Martin, you know we love you. You're our, our star uh, commentator, and uh, we go way back. So to have an hour talking to you is always a pleasure. 
That's right. Um, and I'm not the Matt Smith of the 2003 boat race. I'm older than that. So uh, <laughs> there's a lot of Matt Smiths uh, around. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm going to leave those questions because I, I think uh, you can go and have a well-earned. Um, have you got a drink waiting for you there on the veranda? I've got a, 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 an IOC Tokyo issue that I have to deal with next. Um, they, uh, we have more budget cuts um, in the non-athlete non area. We're working through. We have a, we're working on um, a lot of different things. One of my staff members, Natalie, uh, moved to Tokyo to, to step in to solve a personnel problem there and be is our competition manager and she has agreed to continue for another year wow. um, alone in a little Tokyo apartment to run the team there fantastic team working like crazy um, and we have an issue with Richard budget that uh, I'm working on um, with the IOC and with Tokyo that will be next up after this call and then wow. five o'clock tomorrow morning for the council meeting <laughs> So we're, we're having we're having fun. Good luck, Matt. It's been fantastic to spend some time with you. I can't thank you enough and uh, can't wish you well enough either. Thank you ever so much. And I'm really happy you're feeling better, Martin. Uh, we love you and keep going strong. And we I'm really looking forward to uh, Crossy's Corner and hearing you comment at our events. Thank you. That's great, Matt. You're our... Bye for now. All right. Thanks, everyone. Really nice talking to you and I uh, hope it wasn't too boring. <laughs> See you later. It wasn't. <laughs>